Good afternoon and welcome back. We thank our title sponsor, Celebrite Media, for the wholehearted support. We all know and believe that to become a leader, there are special qualities that one needs to nurture. Corporate world is a practical one and it may be difficult to accept that spirituality plays a role in creating good leadership. Let us see what our eminent guests have to say in this discussion on spirituality in leadership. We welcome our guests in the studio, Mr. Tapan Singhal, Dr. Reverend Mariki Venter, and Dr. Manjiri Prabhu. Tapan Singhal has a rich experience of over 30 years in the insurance industry. He is one of the founding members of Bajaj Alliance General Insurance and has been with the company for over 20 years. He is MD and CEO for close to 10 years. An avid social media influencer, Tapan has over 6 point lakh followers on LinkedIn and has been recognized as the LinkedIn's top voice in India in both 2018 and 2019. He also chairs the CII National Committee on Insurance and Pensions. He is the recipient of multiple awards for his excellent contribution to the insurance industry. Dr. Reverend Mariki Venter, a non-denominational ordained minister and marriage officer, is licensed to conduct marriages, christenings, and memorials. She holds a master's degree in Old Testament and Religious Studies and a doctorate in Religious Studies. She is also a personal mentor to many people seeking a spiritual path. She completed her correspondence studies with the International Center for Yoga Education and Research at the Anand Ashram in Pondicherry, India. Presently, she is the principal of the Anjali School of Yoga, South Africa. Dr. Manjiri Prabhu is an award-winning international author of 18 books, mystery and thriller writer, a short filmmaker and the curator and founder director of two international festivals, Pune International Literary Festival and International Festival of Spiritual India for Humanity and Wisdom. She is also an animal welfare activist, promoting, caring and adoption of stray dogs for more than 35 years. May I request Dr. Prabhu to lead the discussion, please? You have to unmute yourself, uh, Dr. Prabhu. Yes, sorry about that. So uh, thank you, Renu and uh, Mr. Singhal and Dr. Vento. Welcome to IFSI. Pleasure to have you here, even if it's virtual. Uh, and uh, in this really interesting session and topic, spirituality and leadership. And I'm going to plunge straight into this. And uh, you both have a fantastic body of work, are very much into spirituality, are leaders, uh, you know, leading huge organizations and and yoga schools and you know uh, such a such a vast body of work i'm going to go right into it and ask you what makes a good leader i think i'll start with mr singhal what makes a good leader dr Prabhu, thank you it's an honor being here and you know i think with people like you and doctor here the kind of experience that you have and the work that you have done it's very humbling to be here to begin with yeah. i think uh, on leadership, I can talk about my experience. Every leader is a good leader. I think that is how I would define it. So my experience when I look at early on in my um, leadership career, when I was um, younger, I think to me, leadership was simply about um, uh, doing uh, business, about you know, uh, acquiring more uh, customers and uh, steering to the company to greater heights, stronger balance sheets. I think those are the obsessions. But some of the journey, I realized that uh, you know, I think there's a greater purpose of the business we do and uh, the business serves and can serve the society at a much different level and we can make a difference to our uh, country our people and business can be the vehicle to do so let me give you an example here i think if you look at uh, the prime minister scheme of ensuring 40 crores indian you know below poverty line and the lower middle class which is there 
just the impact of it is that the average lifespan of Indians will move over five to seven years. The healthcare infrastructure will improve because obviously now people can pay uh, for a good amount of treatment and they can afford uh, treatment because insurance which has happened there. Or the insurance required for the crops in India. I think if you look at the suicide rates in the farmers community has gone down after the crop insurance was implemented all across. I think the impact that uh, the business can have on society is huge. On the people that we have can be huge. 100,000 people's livelihood we have been able to influence and make a difference, right? From the time when they didn't have enough to eat to a time when they own Mercedes and they move forward. Or the ambition to have at least influencing 1 million lives. I think this transformation in me in terms of how I look at business and the vehicle of it in terms of making and doing good to society had a powerful impact on me. I think that is where the leadership transformation happens. And now I look at, I'm, I'm more contented with what I do. My business is better. My results are better. My achievements are better. You know, compared to the time when I was very focused only on uh, getting my numbers right and doing so. So this transformation, I think, in the process of leadership is something to observe. That as you move towards more humanity and thinking good of others, your business also starts doing much better than what I was doing earlier. I think some learnings I had in my career path, uh, Dr. Prabhu, to answer your question. Difference. You as a business to make a difference in people's lives really great philosophy and I and you know we heard of it I mean I follow you on Twitter and I and also on LinkedIn and I know how people are always so grateful to you whenever there's an achievement there's so much gratitude towards your contribution in their lives and I think that is the sign of a true leader so Dr. Venter tell me I, I know you wanted you are you know you've done your uh, doctoral studies in religion and all but what does leadership really mean to you and then we'll talk about religion and spirituality but first what does leadership mean to you well if somebody is in a leadership position it means that that person is leading a group or being in charge of a group and that person knows something of something and therefore it is a, a tremendous big responsibility to lead others so leadership can be uh, or referred to parents, teachers, governments, politics, religion, businesses, and so much more. It is true that students and followers look up at a leader and they often ascribe to the leader, I suppose, powers that the leader didn't even know initially or thought of. That's a lot of pressure on a leader to keep their followers satisfied and happy. It's also true that when you are in a position of leadership, there's always the possibility of growing a big ego. And hand in hand with a big ego in leadership comes the need for power, for greed, um, for control. And this can lead to devastation, to lies, manipulation, corruption, and even wars. That's why I think it is an, of absolute um, importance that spirituality should enter into leadership. Because humans have uh, certain abilities, talents, and I think inborn spiritual attributes. And we have forgotten about our spiritual attributes. And especially living in a very dense and physical world. So we tend to suffer, we tend to live in fear, in pain and anger and resentment. So I think a leader who is mindful of his or her spiritual abilities, someone who has an insight as well as an understanding of the bigger picture of life, one who is actually practicing and living his or her spiritual principles, has the opportunity to influence um, and bringing about a heightened awareness in their followers. And with such, I think, divine mindfulness, we as humans can move into our divine potential. We can transform what Dr. Ananda always says from doings into beings. Yeah. So um, a true leader for me is really someone that can lead the others to the ultimate good and their authentic selves. That's great. Uh, since you spoke about ego, I know what Lao Tzu said, a leader uh, is one whom people barely know exists. 
and when his work is done and his aim is fulfilled, they feel as if they've done everything. So yes, you know, when you keep the ego aside, a leader is one who makes others feel that they have done all their work. I mean, that's what a good leader is supposed to be. Uh, coming to you, Mr. Single, you've got six lakh plus followers, you know, a history of, you know, 30 plus years uh, in, in this field. And, uh, you know, all I can see your spiritual posts and you do talk shows. You try to bring people together. I want to know how this all began. How, at what point did you feel that you could lead people, you know, with social media in your company? When did you start and how did this journey begin? And how, just tell us a little bit about the whole thing. Interesting, Dr. Prabhu. I think it, it began as a very simple philosophy. And if any customer wants to reach me, and I have close to 120 million customers now. Wow. So if they want to reach me, uh, and if they follow the uh, protocol of uh, bureaucracy, it will be impossible for them to reach me now. So I thought, how can it be that they can reach me uh, wherever and whenever they want to you know, communicate or say something. So I opened social media posts, and I thought LinkedIn would be the right uh, place to open. I just opened it for that account. It has my... Uh, email address, it has my mobile number also, no? and uh, that's why I put it up. Uh, once I opened that, I thought I should start writing something. You know, if, if you have opened an account, it should not be just a, a kind of a dumb account, but at least start putting something on that. And then, what should I write about? I thought, let me write about my experiences, my learnings, my failures, you know, and what have I seen in this, or how I see business, how I see community, how I see society coming through. And I just started writing what I felt like, and I started seeing that people started appreciating what I'm writing, and a lot of started relating to that. So while in relation to the customer uh, grievances or customer feedback, it also became a tool and mechanism to connect to a lot of people about life experiences and my learning through those life experiences and people, amazing people like you whom I met and know, put your stories and other stories also about your life experiences and what is that people gain from it. So it's just something that somebody has gone through some experiences, some, some transformations, some journey, some setbacks. And just put it there so that people want to pick thing up, they want to uh, figure out some solutions, they can do so. I think that is how uh, uh, Dr. Prabhu, this journey began. It's been a very interesting journey for me because I met a lot of interesting people. I interviewed you also, as am kind of amazing work yes. that you have done, no? and put it there. I got a lot of feedback on terms of that people have been able to associate, learn uh, from somebody else's experience. I think uh, that is what life is about. No? Sometimes you yes. learn from other experiences, sometimes you go through your own experiences, putting the stories That's together. Right. Uh, makes a huge difference. I think that is how this uh, social media thing started. It just picked it up, Dr. Prabhu. It just started a small intent that if you want to reach me, they can reach me. And it became a, into a platform where sharing experiences and transformation of life started happening. Uh, so it was. Yeah, but it was but you're an influencer. You're an influencer. People. <laughs> and <laughs> so that makes a lot of difference. It's uh, incidental, Dr. Prabhu. I think, no? <laughs> if, you, if you do good, the rest is incidental. It keeps on happening. True, true, true. I, I agree with you. Uh, Dr. Venter, what about you? I mean, you uh, you run a school for yoga, the Anjali School of Yoga. Uh, you've studied religion. How did you combine all of this together, including your doctoral studies? I mean, where do you think religion, leadership, spirituality, does it all come together at some point or are you separate uh, paddled uh, tracks going on in a life? A very interesting question, and it has not been easy because the minute you are talking about certain things, you have organized religion on the one side, uh, forcing you to believe in the ways they want to. And over and against that, spirituality came in as something that is different to organized and structured dogmatic religion. Uh, throughout the eons of time, humanity has followed one or other religion. And the word religion actually means to bind us back. And it's usually to bind us back to something that is divine or even God. And that is, that is good indeed. But dogma and personal power have killed the essence of religion in our world. So uh, for me, that has been a tough time having been involved in yoga, running a yoga school, and at the same time studying religion. So I have gone through a lot of years of being judged and having been told that I am involved in something that is demonic or satanistic. And um, in the end, you know, when, when, when we talk about these things, if you can be true to your authentic self, 
if you really know who you are and what you are and what you are made up of, that speaks louder than words can say. And so throughout the years, we just hang in there, um, shine our light and live our example. And um, spirituality is really for me to something that take me back inside of myself, our inner divinity, whatever word you want to give it, a practice that enhances uh, us as beings and that honors holiness inside of all of us. I truly think if we can honor that and respect each one for his or her opinion and allow them the time, the space and the opportunity to express who they are, within that lies authenticity that rubs off on everyone else. Dr. Yeah, Prabhu, may I add something here? Because, no, sure, sure. Comes absolutely, absolutely. I was just reminded of Yoga, uh, no, Patanjali Yoga Sutra, no? when Patanjali, Sage Patanjali wrote yes. thousands of years back. Yes. I think that in one sutra he mentions that even if you don't believe in God, you can still be spiritual. So I think yes. contrary to uh, the general feeling that religion no, and spiritualism have to be you know, uh, intertwined, I think yes. I found it so amazing that thousands of years back, there was this yeah. wise sage who was mentioning yes. that spiritualism is a scientific process, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we heard doctors speak about it. it's an inward journey of no, uh, yes. figuring out and no understanding that well. And religion can be a path to it. And if you don't follow any religion also and not any god also, you can still be very spiritual. I have not found this in any other uh, book anywhere. I found it so anyway. intriguing, so interesting to see. So I think what I want to demystify about spiritualism is that it's a very simple scientific process, a stepwise process, no, which anybody can achieve, no, anybody anywhere in the world can achieve that. It's not a very complex um, process as made out to be at times, is my understanding of, yes. you know, it is just an interesting topic I thought I just put in. Yes, uh, no, you're absolutely right. I, I think the aim of this festival is exactly the same, to demystify spiritualism and make it available to, to the common masses and tell them everyone and anywhere can start being spiritual. You don't have to go to the Himalayas and sit and meditate to be spiritual. There are inspiring people and stories and, and sources all around us to do it. So I completely agree with you. I think one of the sutras also says that when you do anything with your heart, your heart is the way. You know, your heart tells you uh, the path to spirituality. I, I don't know which sutra it is, but I know it is there and I've used it in my book. Anyway, coming to that, you know, having said all of this, being spiritual is fine. Being a leader, there's so many tensions and, uh, you know, it's like you're carrying the world on your shoulders because you are the one who's ultimately going to be held responsible. In your experiences, in both your experiences, has there ever been any such incident which was so uh, nightmarish that you had to deep, you know, dive deep into your spiritual uh, well to, to kind of get out of that situation? Has any such thing ever happened to any one of you? I'll start with uh, Mr. Singleton. Do you have any such experience? Yeah, I think there are many experiences, Dr. Prabhu. I think um, I have yet to find a person who did not have difficult times or difficult experiences, no, I think. And we also heard about the story of Lord Buddha when a lady went to him and said that my son has died, please revive. And uh, Gautam Buddha says that, uh, please go and bring me some grain from a house in which no death has happened. No? By the time the lady comes back and she says that, no, I realize no, for what you want to uh, communicate. So I think there's not any individual I can find who would not have gone through difficult times. You know. Now, two options. When you go through a difficult time, one option is that you get so overwhelmed by the difficult times that you start losing yourself completely into it. And you get into a spiral of uh, negativity or hopelessness or into a spiral of you know, giving up. And, and you become so weak um, in your own mental self that life seems very meaningless to you. you know. And the other option is when you get into difficult times, is to be able to look at it on a very different plane in terms of you no know, uh, having one compassion towards yourself to begin with, to understand that you no know, uh, this too will pass. Third, the learnings from it, and fourth, how can you make a difference to other people's life, even if you are going through a difficult times. The attitude to look at everybody else with a lot of compassion, and your difficulty should become an example to others in terms of uh, that if this happens. How would they come out of it and what solution can you provide out of it? And how do you gain strength in the most difficult times and emerge victorious out of it is something that 
is an option, which is not a difficult option that once you realize to take it off. So instead of going down a spiral way of no negativity, first love yourself, have huge compassion for yourself. Then see how can you still make a difference in other people's life, you know, and have a lot of compassion, get it towards what you have and start working towards it step by step, step by step, and you come out of it. I think, and once you do it, then the next difficulty becomes easier to manage. And then the third difficulty becomes no difficulty. And the fourth time, you are in a much more powerful plane than what you are. So this journey is something that every individual has to go through. It. The choice is ours, you know, how do we handle when you go through a difficult phase. But difficult phase, all of us go through. It's something that's very, very clear. So I can give you many examples, Dr. Prabhu, but I think uh, as I yeah. said, it's very yeah. difficult for me to find somebody who's not gone through any difficult phase. How true, do you handle true. that? Yeah. What is very critical? No, absolutely. And to to handle any difficulty, uh, you know, with a presence of mind, you do need to have a, a kind of basic emotional grounding and stability, and the ability to dive into yourself to find that strength that is required for a situation. I think that comes with spirituality and and being a uh, being a good leader. I'm going to come back to being a leader, but uh, uh, because that's how you take people along with you and solve. Uh, questions and whatever. Dr. Wenger, what, what about you? Wow, a lot of things have been said now, I agree. Um, you know, to define spirituality is an ongoing process because it means something different for everyone. And for years, we have used that term very loosely, very easily. Most of the times where I'm coming from, the word spirituality was used like something different than organized religion and uh, now i think as we have moved on through our time we would have to redefine maybe the word spirituality and each one will do that for him or herself i also believe that each individual uh, must do his or her best in the ways that you know that you are trained in or that you've studied or part of your culture uh, part of your way of thinking, because each individual is actually a leader. And anything we do, everything we do, rubs off on other people. And uh, I said earlier that I think a good leader is somebody that leads you to your ultimate good. And then I remember what Gandhi once said, that we must become the change in the world. Um, that change that we expect we have to become that first. And that is the secret of authentic and spiritual leadership, that you make an effort as a leader to know who you are, so that when you then have a thought, we know that becomes a word. We also know that words will become actions, and actions our habits, and habits our character, and our character our culture. So a tremendous responsibility on somebody that sits in front of a class or leads a company uh, or any of the other things that we have mentioned, that we can stay, stay true to ourselves at all times. Yes, lovely. Very, very well said. And I agree with you about uh, actions rubbing off uh, onto others because we are all connected and whatever yeah. we do, Yes, whatever we do is also uh, what is going to affect the others. And it's a chain effect, basically. Having said that, you know, what would you say, you know, a, a good leader, I feel is, I have read it somewhere, but I also believe that you should have respect for yourself, respect for others, but you have to take the responsibility for everything. So when it comes to that, and when you meet all kinds of people, you know, sometimes diabolical, sometimes people who have hidden agendas, especially within a framework of a business. Uh, when you meet all these kinds of people, how do you deal with people who are all not just negative, but sometimes even evil, sometimes people who want your ill and or want the bad for your company or, or for your school or, you know, that kind of a thing. How do you deal with people and that kind of evil negative energy around you? Mr. Singhal. Okay, so when I was younger, Dr. Prabhu, you know, the way would be uh, an eye for an eye. So somebody wants to play politics, I would you know, try and think how do I uh, checkmate that person and how do I you know also counter, how do I get rid of that person? And it would be like a warfare. You no, know? I think that is how it was. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, over time, I saw that it's getting very uh, energy consuming. It would bring down my productivity levels. It would bring down me as a person. 
even if I win the battle, so let's say even in this yeah. political game, I win it, but I would yeah. be a very uh, weak person at the end of it. No, I think that is something which I uh, realized. And then uh, the transformation happened in me. I think then what happened was that um, I started thinking of um, good uh, people also who would you know, try and think um, ill of me. You know? So I think uh, that when I started doing so, I saw a transformation in other person also. So they would like you know, still try to do for their best interest. But everybody would think from their own perspective. So it's not right or wrong. I think they would be thinking from their perspective, whatever is the yeah. power game or, or the game. Maybe they are right. You know? Why should I think that you know, from my perspective, it is wrong or it? I should still think good of that person. I should try my best intent to still do good for the person who is going to or is harming me from my perspective. Maybe that harm comes out for good. So let me again uh, re revise the question a bit, Dr. Prabhu, and ask you know, all of you who are listening to it. And you think of all the negative that was done to you, and you actually think in the past that negative actually brought a lot of positive for you and made you who you are. No? If that negative didn't happen, you would not be where you are today in terms of your development and your life um, uh, story. I think there's a lot of gratitude to people who actually uh, bought, uh, as per you, negativity or you know, uh, ill towards you because because of them, you actually became much stronger and much you know better as a human being and uh, a more spiritual person than what you would have been if they had not been in your life. So they, they have done a lot of good for you. So you have a lot of grat you know, gratitude towards them and be grateful towards them. I think two yeah. things happened when I turned my attitude towards you no know, uh, being thankful of people who actually you know uh, would think of you no know, harming me. I saw transformation them also towards me. I think somewhere the positivity that you bring even to a negative person transform the person also to a large extent. And some of them actually became very good friends of mine over a period of time. No, mm -hmm. and even when it's the evil definition that we have, we still think that person you no know, is good. There's no person in the world with there's no good in that person. So that person may be behaving in a certain parameter from his belief or his circumstances or what it is. No, if you have compassion, love, and gratitude, yeah. and even if you see the person do you evil, and that is actually going to be helpful to make you a stronger person, you will see a transformation happening. And and for you, the environment was much better. I have seen this transformation happen for me and my team, and my people around, or my customers, or advisors. I see a very powerful team now with a lot of positivity and a lot of high energy, just with a simple attitude of mind that no. I think I should do good to people. And if somebody yeah. wants to harm me, I should do more good to that person and stand and be very compassionate with that person. I think that was my transformation, Dr. Prabhu, over time. No, but that's not a simple attitude at all. It requires a big heart to still do good to people who want to do you do you harm. And I'm going to narrate a very small, quickly button and a very funny incident because you talked about do good. In the first year of PILF in 2013, we had no sponsors. Uh, totally, we were doing uh, our first experience and we put up authors in different hotels. So there was one author, I'm not going to name him, one author who went around with a placard at PILF saying, I am not a bestseller author. Why? Because we put him in a small hotel and there were some others in a big hotel. Now, so at that point, it, it really angered me that, you know, no one was doing a festival in her. I was putting in my energy and everything. But later I reached out to him and, you know, I re-invited him back to the festival. I put him up in a good place. I mean, I showed him what went wrong the first time and why we couldn't do it. Today, he's my, one of my best friends, you know, so I did not let that negativity affect me. Uh, so I just want, this is not, this was not to do good, but this was to transform him in a different way. So yes, transformation can happen, but it was a funny incident. And I remind him of that all the time. Mm -hmm. Whenever he comes to PILF, whatever I say, please wear a placard which says, now I'm a best selling author. <laughs> No, but Dr. So, Prabhu, I think this person we're talking about you everywhere yeah. now. So the same person yeah. who was actually, you know, in a negative field, just yeah. because you reached out and you know and made that difference. So that is yes. what. So I think sometimes we don't yes. realize this. You know, we should make yeah. an attempt. As you said, it may be difficult to begin with, but over yes. time, when you start seeing the positivity, it becomes very easy, Dr. Prabhu. But you have to make that first step. You take that first step. I That's think that right. Yeah. Learning that I had. Yes. You know? yes. Yes. So, uh, Dr. Vento, what about you? How do you deal with people who are negative in your life and don't want your good? Yes, I had to learn from a very early age after, I, as I said, I have been called a lot of different names by religious people. Yes. And especially when yoga came into the conversation, oh, that was a no-no for them. Oh. But I've realized it's no use to fight them because they come from a specific way of thinking or a religious background or a spiritual background or what they've been conditioned as well. And they don't always know. So it was for me a kind of a wake up call. If you then believe, I said to myself, in what you are doing 
and you think that is pure and right and noble, then live that life because they're going to see it. I've got an example where my in-laws told me that I'm from the devil because I was doing yoga. And so I just kept quiet. And years afterwards, she came back to us, especially my mother-in-law. She said, you know what? My religious minister tells me you are evil, but I can't see the evil in you. And that was a tremendous breakthrough. So you focus on you first things first, because we do not have to agree with anyone in life. We are all individuals, but what I believe is that we should respect and honor that which is inside of the person. If we can look through everything and find that core, spirituality or divinity, whatever term we would like to give it, and focus on that, then we empower the other person as well. And because of that empowering, they will then look through different eyes at us. I believe we like links in a chain. So each link is vitally important to make up the whole of the chain, to make it strong. And if we say life is a chain and we are all links, I have to honor and respect you too. Otherwise we make the chain very weak. And if I judge you, I actually judge myself. And judging is just, it just, too high a price. And so in a way, over the years, when I was judged, it actually made me stronger because I have to had to go inside of me and say, so if this is true, what they are saying, how do you see it differently? And how do you live it differently? So then we come not just from theories um, and philosophies, but we come to being who we say we are. And within that, everyone can see and feel and experience the inner power that will radiate. And I believe through that we do, we do really um, lead people to a different way of looking at life. Wonderful, yes. I think this can also be a result of jealousies uh, you know, people are also jealous of your success, jealous because you're doing something different, jealous because you don't, um, you know, ignorant, of course, because they don't really understand. So maybe that's why when you introduce yoga into your life, they didn't understand what it was. And, you know, you went against the stereotypes uh, that were established in society. And yes, you have to be um, self-contained and, and kind of happy within yourself and, and believe in yourself to rule out these people and their comments and their opinions of you from your life and, and move on. I think we are almost closing, uh, nearing the end, but I want to ask both of you for three to four or what are the essential, most um, required spiritual qualities for a leader, no matter what he's leading, but what are the most important spiritual qualities that a leader must have to succeed and to lead a good team? Uh, Mr. Singles? First is like, you know, the eye of the storm, like even in the storm, uh, you have to be very calm, well, not because you're making effort, uh, by your own nature, you'd be calm irrespective of what turmoil or storm is going around you. That I think would make a huge difference because then you can think clearly, you can solve uh, issues for society, for people, for the company in a very clear manner. So that calmness in you has to be there. Second, huge amount of love, respect, compassion for those around you. I think that is something which comes second. If you are not able to have that strong feeling of love, compassion and feel for others, and you should feel from you, you should feel for it, not just you say it, you feel for people around you and their sorrow, you can feel it, their love, happiness, you can experience it yourself. And the other second attribute you clearly should be having on a lead. Third is your desire to solve issues which trouble the society or um, the environment around you and your contribution to making the world a better place. I think that intense desire should be there in its own way. And fourth and uh, finally, your own love for your own self, compassion for your own self, you know, and being with you uh, is something which is very critical. So there are three, four things which I feel everyone has to progress on the path of leadership is what one should be building. Yes, wonderful points, because 
I completely agree with you. Love, peace, compassion. Uh, those are my uh, uh, my breath, I oxygen. Uh, I believe in them completely, and I know that they, that you believe in them too, because your company has caringly yours as your uh, as your tagline, which I just love. And you have an insurance for dogs, uh, mm -hmm. which is also something super. So uh, that was wonderful. What about you, Doctor Mehta? Give me four, five, you know, spiritual must qualities. You know, must quality that you must have to be a good leader. Well, I think I agree with Dr. Swami Gitananda that uh, through yoga, one becomes aware. Something happens when, for me, I think my hero ingredient in life is um, pranayama, which is the science of breathing consciously. Um, I think if everyone can for a moment be conscious of that breath that is happening inside of us every moment of our lives, the higher mind kicks in. And so for me, it's very important that a leader should have awareness, consciousness, and mindfulness. And the other things I've already said, I agree with all of that respect and honor. And you know, when we go to that essence that is inside of us, some call it God, some call it holy breath, we can call it prana. Um, if we can just be aware of, of that, it will make us a more mindful, compassionate being. And if we become spiritually matured through our practices, whatever it may be for you, then we can live in love. And one is capable of working with others and living with others, or if you are a leader, leading other people. So I suppose mindfulness, consciousness, awareness, um, that things are very important for me within a leader. Very well said. Yes, absolutely. I think my takeaway from this whole session and your concluding remarks uh, are that, of course, love, care, you know, show compassion to others, to yourself, and, you know, uh, feel for them, like feel for others, like Mr. Single said. Do pranayam like Dr. Venter said, because pranayam means mindful breathing and mindful breathing will raise your consciousness and help you take decisions and lead your team in a very, very beautiful way. So uh, thank you so much uh, for being here today, uh, Mr. Single and Dr. Winter. It has been a pleasure talking with you. Uh, any last minute quick words you think you should have said but haven't said? Would you like to add something? First of all, thank you, Dr. Prabhu. I think, you know, I've been a student the past couple of years now. I've seen how passionate you are in making a different society or putting things up, putting it up as a spiritual festival. I think very few will think of putting, you know, people who are experiencing going through and getting it to the audience. I think you do a great job, you know, and it's a pleasure listening to Dr. Vetna. I think her, uh, it clearly reflects from the way she says and feels, you know, or what she's on this uh, journey. And I think a platform of yours who brings all this together and then to the larger audience, I hope that you know, in contributing to world peace, uh, this too shall make a, a big difference. So I think uh, we should thank you, Dr. Prabhu. And thank you, Dr. Vetna, for Most welcome, my pleasure. I really enjoyed you know, yeah. listening to both of thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, all of you.